Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, and today, today we're in Mill Basin, Brooklyn to visit the Church of Mary, Queen of Heaven. Hi, and welcome back to Mary, Queen of Heaven in Old Mill Basin. Thank you so much for coming on here Thank you, and Anthony. sharing this with us. It's funny, one of our producers, Laura, yes. here, she knows a lot about this church. Sure. I kid her, kid with her all the time, but she knows a lot. She was filming me on a lot of stuff. I here. remember when she was looking for a job. I said, how about the net? See, and <laughs> isn't that amazing? Well, I know that I remember coming here, and then I know you started doing you know, what you do, which I just basically, <laughs> as you walked in, you were looking, I was watching your brain go, your eyes go, I'll change this, I'll change this. I know. I were, said, what did I do here? What did what, I do here? What That's were the, not how I What were the it. renovations that you did here? Because I know there was a fire. Right, right. When uh, Father Cull became pastor, I think it was around 1997, mm -hmm. and he became pastor. He was only here a short time. In fact, I think it was right after his installation. Um, it was a Sunday afternoon, and there was a terrible uh, thunder and lightning storm and uh, the steeple got hit by lightning and it traveled through and it, uh, there's a grotto in the, in the back uh, in honor of St. Bernadette, Our Lady of Lords, and uh, it got um, struck by lightning and the fire went through there and, and the candlesticks and throughout the whole church and the whole church was destroyed and they had to renovate the church and um, they did a, man, a magnificent job. I really cannot take credit for any of the, the church re reconstruction and renovation in here. I made a few touches. I put the Blessed Sacrament back in the center of the altar, and I put the crucifix that we can talk about in yeah, a few minutes. I, I want to talk about that. I yes. want to get to that, because it's a very unique crucifix. I've never seen one anything like that. Yes. So that was um, the major renovation. And there was another major re renovation in the um, mid-'70s, and the people of the parish all the people in the parish came and they did the work themselves and they did a magnificent job. And then the fire came and then it was renovated uh, again. And uh, here we are in the, in the basement church. During the renovations, where did they hold mass? Well, during the renovations, they held mass in the uh, school hall. Uh, by the way, it's the Monsignor Jamie Hall now. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a great honor to be made. I think when that's, I a, left that's here. a great honor. Uh, of course, I, I renovated the hall and the school and all the grounds and all. That's you know that's my my signature. <laughs> I like that. I like. So that. when I left, they they gave me that honor. But um, it they had they celebrated mass down there while the renovations took place. So now we're here, and and I look around here and I see a lot of different things. Are these the original stained glass? These uh, are, because of the fire, I wasn't yes, sure. These are the original stained glass from the um, original church. They're beautiful. They really are. And the stations of the cross? Yes. Uh, well, the stations of the cross, I think, are new. They are I new. could not be 100% with that. But I believe that these stations of the cross. You know, you never can tell because, you know, some of the churches we go to, they renovate them and then they look like they're brand new. Right. And each church has its own, like, right. design to it. I think they were destroyed with the fire. Now, what I find is the crucifix there, but there's not a crucifix above the altar. No. I mean, the crucifix, in most churches, there is a crucifix on the back wall or hanging suspended mm -hmm. from the ceiling or above the altar. That cross was in the back, and when we put the Blessed Sacrament there, we, we, we moved the cross to the side. Can you describe the artifact above? Yes. Uh, when um, I moved the Blessed Sacrament back to the center of the altar, um, we needed something behind the, um, uh, the tabernacle. And it, there wasn't really enough room to put a, a crucifix. And the cru crucifix that we had, I, didn't, I wanted to keep in the church. So we looked for a Eucharistic symbol. And it's, you know, bread and wine, the wheat.
One of the parishioners, uh, Dolores Fleck, uh, the, fa the Fleck family were one of the founding families of the parish, were here for many, many years. And that's another thing, there's so many people in this parish that were here their whole lives. Um, you know, it, it was just uh, amazing that people never left this neighborhood of Old Mill Basin. You know, the neighborhood changed and a lot of people moved away, but a lot of people um, remained here. And uh, it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, place. Grace Devlin, she's 97 years old now, and she was in the parish from the very beginning. And it's, uh, it's wonderful, wonderful to see. So what the, the, the Fleck family uh, donated that in honor of their family. Well, that's really nice that they did that. And we have a, a beautiful uh, picture of our Blessed Mother. Yes. Because the title of the church is Mary, Queen of Heaven. Heaven. And the, the mosaic um, stained glass, I guess yes. you'd say it's mosaic. Yes. Uh, illuminates it. Yes. Well, that was put in after the renovation, after the fire, mm -hmm. because it is dark because you just have the side windows. So the skylight was put in to bring light in, uh, right above the altar. Uh, it, and it was a beautiful addition to the church. And you can see the Blessed Mother right there, a reminder yeah, uh, of the title of our of Mary, Queen of Heaven. Which, there's a shrine in the back of the church now. Yes. Was that there when you were Yes, here? that was there. That was there from the original, uh, I'm not sure, the original church, but it was there before the renovations in the 70s and even after the fire. It's actually, yes. it's very beautiful. You yes. Know, I've been back there a few times. Yes, of our Blessed Mother. And the baptismal font, was that always there? Was that moved there? Well, that was put there after the renovation of the fire. Okay. But prior to that, um, I'm not sure where it was. Um, Maybe I have to ask Laura because this was she, her home she parish. She do, she, I'm sure she'll, she'll know. She'll do her research. Maybe she was her baptized Louis. there. But, no, because yeah. I remember the baptismal funds usually were on the, always in the back of the church. But then uh, I remember you saying a lot of the priests, they wanted it up so that the people can see the baby being baptized. Well, also the, 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 uh, the, they were baptized outside the church so that they could become part of the community. Mm -hmm. Don't forget in the early churches, baptism was for adults. Adults be, were converted to become Christian. So they did not come in to worship with the community until they were baptized, and it was usually a separate building, and then they would be welcomed into the church, into the family. Now, when you, the renovations were going on, now I remember you did it in St. Bernard's. Um, the, the doors, did you put them, that was part of it? No, that was there. That was, I think, part of the renovation. Okay. Um, because, you know, at the time, uh, in the early, you know, 60s and 70s, uh, and even in the early 80s, the capacity of this church is only about three, 400 people. And um, it was very crowded. This neighborhood was very densely populated. So um, they had to have a lot of masses. So the, par the parish, the church was always full with people. They had a number of masses on Sunday, a couple of masses during the week. Uh, so it was a very large parish. Um, for such a small church, yes. and, and I understand you, you brought in some other things, you know, um, the feast and... Well, the yeah, novena in honor of St. Jude, uh -huh. and also the feast in honor of St. Anthony. Uh, we have a novena uh, every morning for nine days before, and then we would have the 13 Tuesdays for St. Anthony, and on the feast day of uh, St. Anthony, and then even of St. Joseph, we would bless the, the bread, mm. the blessing of the, with the relic, so we, we would kind of, you know, uh, spruce up those feast days. And so, and they're still continuing. And and I know that uh, the music conducted Gerard. Gerard, yes, Gerard He's a great Connelly. guy, I like He's him. wonderful. Gerard, uh, I, I cannot take credit. When I came here, he was playing at the uh, 10 o'clock mass and he played throughout my whole tenure here. And then uh, when I got transferred over to St. Bernard down the block, uh, he came over, he didn't leave here. He still played here and he came from here and he went and celebrated the mass over there. Uh, every guy. Sunday. He's a wonderful, faithful person. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, um, Monsignor Jamie's going to tell us a lot more about Mary Queen of Heaven, so we'll be right back. Well, we're back, and we're with Monsignor Jamie here at Mary Queen of Heaven. Um, outside on the doors, there's all sorts of etchings in the glass. Yes. Was that from the previous? No, that, that was put in... Um, when I put those doors in, uh, because they had the old wood doors mm -hmm. of the church. So when I came here, you know, I, I did the whole front, the whole uh, the sidewalk over, I did all new brickwork, and I beautified the gardens outside. The old convent was really like a storage 
house. And uh, I, I renovated that and I turned it into the Monsignor Burns Center oh. uh, in his honor. Uh, he was a pastor here for over 27 years, but then he, was, he lived here. And uh, in his honor um, and his work for the parish, I named the center after him. And uh, we then, I invited the sisters of St. Dominic to come live on the top floor. And they're very much a part of, a pa of the parish now. The second floor, I rented out to the Department of the Aging to serve the community, but also to get some income for the parish. And the bottom uh, level and the basement, we use as a parish center. We have a chapel in there, we had exposition of the Blessed Sacrament there, we had meetings there. So we turned it into a, a very uh, useful building. And then the rest of the grounds I beautified and it was time because um, oh, no, the I church stopped. was renovated, but we were celebrating the 75th anniversary and I felt that it was so important to really beautify the whole parish. So it was a, a a uh, beautiful celebration of the parish, but a beautiful celebration of the people and the community here. Well, you did a great job because I, I go around, you, I could see that. I see it in 9-11. Right. Um, you did a time capsule as well. Yes, on the, during the 75th anniversary, we buried a time capsule. And we also then put a monument there uh, in honor of those who died on September 11th. Yeah. Because um, I was here when that happened. I watched from the school roof. Uh, the first building that came down, and then I went over to uh, the city and, you know, uh, volunteered my services over there. But it was during that time that I was here at Mary Queen of Heaven. So a lot happened for me personally Why here. Why are you here? So it is, this place has a very special place in my heart. I mean, I know you did, we did all yeah. this, and, and here's the statue of uh, St. Teresa. Teresa. We have the statue of the welcoming Christ, the Christ. risen Christ. We did the steeple over in honor of, of Mary, Queen of Heaven. Done. Yes, too. we did all the, the gardens. I like that you have a crucifix right in the yes. middle. I knew how to design that. I know yeah. you. I know you. <laughs> and if then you were a, a, a Monsi, you'd be one heck of a contractor, <laughs> I'll tell you. Now, this is uh, in memory of 9-11. Uh, 9-11, we put this up here and uh, after September 11. With the bell, with the original bell. That's that, the bell you were talking about yes. that was in the tower. Right. Now, is that's the time capsule? That's the dime, time capsule that we buried on the 75th anniversary in 2002. Mm -hmm. And Probably. we put a lot of old photos and the records of the marriages and the baptisms, the graduation classes and all that took place wow. here in the parish. So. And that's? That's the uh, Monsignor Burns Center, Center. The, formerly the convent. It's very well done. I mean, this is really a nice, a nice thing that, that you did here. And as we're walking, as we're walking, um, I mean, I'm looking just at it from this point of view. I mean, and that's that's the that's the Mary Queen of Heaven statue. Yes, statue of Our Lady. It looks beautiful. Yes, crucifix right on top. It really looks really really, and the and the statue of the, of Our Lady. Yes, Mary Queen of Heaven, and that survived during the fire. Yes, yes, that survived and. Of course, you know, when I got here, I fixed the whole facade outside and I, I raised up the steeple a little bit so that you can see the statue of Mary, had it painted and redone, and then we fixed that up. It's beautiful. Uh, it, it really does. It, 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 the church in the basement. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Each church has a story, and this one has a great, great story. Yes. Come on, let's head back inside so you can tell okay. us some more. Really phenomenal. And, and I also see, you know, the plaques that you have. Here. Yes. This was, we had all the doors over and the church, the doors were installed in honor of these people here. Wow. Parishioners, former parishioners. And, and your mom. Yes, uh, at the time when my mother passed away, one of the parishioners donated uh, this, the grotto of the Blessed Mother and we had the dome illuminated at night because it was dark at night, obviously dark, but uh, we had illuminated and uh, they wanted to do in honor of my mother who passed away here. 
I remember that nice and soft. I like this. Yeah, so those are the uh, uh, images of the sacraments and um, we put them in all the doors. We have new doors here because down in the basement was dark. They had the old wood doors. Yeah. So the glass lets the light come in and it shines through. It's, it's nice. <laughs> Let's go back inside and, and uh, we'll talk a little more. Yes. We were talking about the bell yes. that was struck by lightning. Now, can you explain a little more about that? Well, the bell tower, when it was struck by lightning, uh, for some reason, when the renovations took place, the bell was never put back up. I don't know why, and it was, I found it in the garage. And uh, when I renovated outside for the 75th, I put that outside next to the, the 911 memorial and the time capsule that we buried on the 75th, and I put the bell there saying that this bell is the original bell of the church, of the basement church of Mary, Queen of Heaven. See, that, that's, that's, a good, that's a great thing that you did. You know, otherwise it would have been catching dust yes. in, in, in a closet. And you, you, you know, I remember you telling me about your other church you found statues and things behind walls and all of a sudden uh, now you're bringing them out that, that, that people can see the history of the church. We're gonna take a break and when we come back, Monsignor Jamie's gonna show us something very special to him here at Mary, Queen of Heaven. So please, Come on back. Hi, before we get back with Monsignor Jamie, we were thinking about having a little interview here with one of our producers, Laura, who I talk about so much when she's off camera with Louie and Lorenzo and Steven and Mark and everybody that puts this show together. But this is special to Laura because this is Laura's parish. Hi, Laura. Hi. I'm Say hi to our viewers. <laughs> hi, viewers. So tell us about Mary Queen of Heaven. Well, this is this is my home parish. Um, I was baptized here, made all my sacraments here. Uh, my niece was baptized here. My best friend got married here. It just I feel like I've lived some of the most important moments in my life here. It's really it's a special place to me. What would you say is one of your favorite memorable moments here? I mean. All the things that we did when we were kids, they used to have holiday parties um, in the Kappa Gymatorium after Mass for the kids. Santa would be in this very gazebo at Christmas time to listen to all the kids. Um, but I, I think this parish is really about the people. Um, I made some of my greatest friends here. Um, and the priest, I mean Monsignor Burns, he was, he was like an uncle. I have only the greatest memories of him. And Monsignor Jamie, of course. Sure. He was here for 12 years. Since I was 10 years old, he's been here with me. So. Laura, thank you so much for coming out oh, here. It was and my pleasure. Speaking of Monsignor Jamie, we'll be right back with him. So, Monsignor, tell us about this crucifix. Well, that crucifix, I believe, was commissioned in Europe, and it's a beautiful uh, rendition of the crucifixion. And most um, crucifixes have Christ nailed to the cross. Mm -hmm or they have the body of Christ risen and his hands away from the, the, the cross. But this one has one hand, his left arm, nailed to the cross, and the other arm reaching out. And it can be interpreted in many ways. It can be interpreted as Christ coming off the cross, helping you, even in his suffering, even while he was carrying his cross, he was trying to help his mother, the apostles, St. John, and all those who are around him. Or it can be interpreted as the Lord asking all of us to help him carry his cross. And it's a beautiful, beautiful cross. And uh, it has been part of this parish for, I, I believe, almost over 40 years. Yeah, I, I was also looking at it like uh, maybe uh, like a reaching out like come with me to heaven sure. or something. You know, I, sure. there's what, different I'm ways. I'm here to help you. There's I'm here so to help many, you. I, yes. I kind of looked at it that yes. way and I, I found that to be, it's right. definitely unique. I've never right. seen anything like that. That totally different. So Monsignor, you've been at different parishes. What would you say is the most meaningful thing that you want to be remembered for here at Mary Queen of Heaven? Probably, um, you know, when people think of Monsignor Jamie in a parish, they say, oh, look at all the things he renovated. He yes, renovated well. the church, he beautified the gardens, he does all this work, he, he puts a new kitchen so he can film Breaking Bread in every place that he goes. But that's secondary. I want to be remember, remembered for how I touch the lives of people, especially children. My most memorable days here has to be the, the family mass at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning with the wonderful live, lively music of Gerard Connolly 
And what I did was I incorporated the children in everything that we did. You we do. started class masters every Sunday. CCD, I moved from Wednesday to Sunday, and they had to go to church after CCD in the morning. It was part of the CCD instruction Very on smart. Sunday. And I had them march in in the beginning of Mass. They sat around the altar. They participated. They did the readings. They acted after communion. They, each class had to do something every Sunday. We had scout Masses. We had so many different things that got the children involved. At Christmas time, I lit up the whole outside of the church and we had a big Christmas spectacular. Mm -hmm. You know, I love to do that and have the kids come out. We have the live nativity. We have the live animals on the Feast of the Holy Family. Uh, where the children can come out and, and experience how it was when Christ was born, to so have the live animals. And I'll never forget the time we had a llama here. A llama? Right. And the llama was here, so everyone was feeding them, and I was feeding the llama. And of course, you know, I'm a little, I'm a kid at times, and I had the food in my hand, and I blew into the llama's face, into his nose. The llama jumped up, got loose jumped over the fence, oh. all the kids started running, the, the, the llama was running into the parking lot. It was, it was. Uh, 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 it did was, anybody catch it uh, on camera? Oh, I, I don't know if they had it at that time. This had to be over 10 years ago. People didn't have their phones. They can, not, not everyone had a, a cell phone, but it was hysterical. But really, it's really getting the children involved and the children of masses and the involvement of the children. That probably has to be uh, one of my most memorable times here. And I took that when I went to St. Bernard. Yes, you did. And I took it when I went to Our Lady of Mount and Carmel. I, and I have to tell you, I've never yeah. seen, and, and a lot of the priests are following you now because the children are the future. And I never saw that as a kid. It was always like a backed off thing, but you would bring them up and you bring up all the kids and I would go, look, because I remember my nieces and everybody going, oh, that's really nice because you, you, you're reaching out to them because, you know, kids are impressionable and that's a great impression that the, the pastor's inviting you. Come on, you know, it's not like forbidden. You can't, right, you know. exactly. We're very children friendly, we're family friendly, and, you know, you have to be open. And that's, you know, even like now at uh, Lady Mount Carmel, every Sunday uh, at the end of Mass, I say, who's a visitor here? Where are you from? You know, we're all here, we're all sinners, all are welcomed in God's house. Yeah, well, I, I have to tell you, you do a great job wherever you go. And, Thank you so much for coming on here Thank you, and Andrew. sharing this with us. Now, I don't know what next what next for us. We'll figure another church out. <laughs> Maybe your first Please. one. No, I have two now. I know, but I, I, I think that you, thank you so much for coming thank on you. here and, and sharing uh, your memories and uh, the history of Mary Queen of Heaven. So that's it for this episode. So if you have any questions, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter, or you can follow us on netnewyork.tv or you can write into us at City of Churches, 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until next time, I'm Anthony Mangano with Monsignor Jamie, and I thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you so much for coming.